Let's put a Linux desktop in a Docker container on a Synology NAS using WebTop. So we're going to start by going to linuxserver.io. And not fleet this time, not fleet. We're actually going to click on docs, which is, I probably should have just been doing this for all of my previous videos. But we'll come up to container images, and then we're going to scroll down to the bottom where it says WebTop. We're going to click on WebTop, and this has got all the documentation for WebTop that linuxserver.io provides, which is pretty awesome. They do it for all of their other, all the other Docker videos that I've done that use linuxserver.io. You can do that for any of those apps too, so it might be helpful. Well, let's scroll down. And then we want the section that says Docker Compose. So here we go. We've got our Docker Compose text that we need. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to head back into the Synology NAS. The only program that we need is one called Container Manager, which if you don't have, just head over to the Package Center, type in Container Manager, and it should show up. If it's not showing up for you, that means that it is not available on your model of Synology NAS. But maybe Google around and see if people have gotten it to work on your specific model. So in Container Manager, we're going to click Project, Create, and we're gonna do a new project name. We're gonna call it WebTop, but you could call it whatever you want. You could call it Fresh RSS, but that's a whole different app and that wouldn't make any sense. So we'll just stick with WebTop, keep it simple. So for path, we're gonna to go to File Station and create a folder for this all to live in. So I'm gonna click on my Docker share, which you should have. When you create Container Manager, you should get this Docker share. And in here, I'm gonna right click, create a new folder, and I'm just gonna call it WebTop, which again, you could call it whatever you want. Click inside a WebTop, and let me go back to Container Manager. So for path, I'll set path to that folder we just created and Docker, WebTop, select. And then for source, we are not uploading a Docker Compose. We're going to create one because it's a little bit easier. So I'm going to paste in all that text that I got from the Linux server.io documentation. And we're going to make a couple of changes. So first off, let's go do the section that says environment. And then we need the PUID, PGID. And I happen to know that mine is 10, 28, and 100. So your PGID is also probably 100, but your ID is probably different. If you don't know how to get it, it's really easy. We're just going to come to Control Panel and then come down to Task Scheduler. Let me delete this so I can show you how it's done fresh. We'll click Create Schedule Task, User-Defined Script. I'm going to uncheck Enable, Enabled, not Enable, Enabled, and then click on Task Settings. And under Run Command and User-Defined Scripts, I'm going to write a script. I'm just going to type in ID space greater than sign space. I'm going to click back in a file station. I'm going to right-click my Docker share, click Properties. I'm just going to copy that path. Your path is probably the same as mine, Volume 1 slash Docker. So I'll paste that in and then forward slash id.txt. And all this is going to do is create a text file in this location called id.txt that's going to have all that text information we need. So I'll click OK. And then I will, oh, did I not name it? Is this task 10? Let's see. Oh, I didn't name it. Didn't name it. Let's, let's name it. Task name get id. All right, so we've got get id. I'm just going to click run and then run the task. Are you sure you want to run the following task? Get ID. I'll click OK, and then it'll run it. So the reason it's not enabled is because that means it's going to run on a schedule, and I don't really need to get my ID every night because it doesn't change nightly. So let's go back into the Docker share, and look who shows up. We got our ID.txt. If it's not showing up for you, just make sure that you click outside of that folder first and then back in. So I'll double-click ID.txt, and I can see my UID is 1028, so yours will probably be something different, but your GID is probably 100. So you've got that. We've got that filled out. And then TZ is just short for time zone. I don't think you have to fill this out, but I'm going to. I'm going to type in America, New York, because I'm on the New York time zone on the East Coast. And then under volumes, we want to create these folders. So this first folder, this config folder, when we're in our Linux desktop, we're going to get a home folder. And we can actually link that to a folder on our Synology NAS. So we call those bind mounts, I believe. So let's let's make a bind mount. I'm going to do period forward slash. Normally, I would just type in config. I would just keep them the same, just a little bit easier that way. That could be a little confusing in this case. I'm actually going to call this web top. Let's call this web top home. So web top dash home. And then I need to make sure that this folder exists. So I'm going to go on a file station. I'm going to click inside of my web top folder that we created, create a new folder, and I'll just call it web top home. So this folder just has to match what's in here with that period forward slash in front of it. If, you, uh, if you're if you curious, if I right click and click properties and I were to copy this file path, that is the same thing as what I have written here. So you can do either or I'm just going to stick with the period forward slash. That period is just short for wherever I'm at. I'm looking for this folder. We don't have to worry about the second line. So then ports. Ports 3000, 3001 might be fine. Um, I feel like 3000 is kind of common in other Docker containers. So I'm going to change this. I'm going to change you to 2100. 
and then 2101. This is going to be how we access our Linux server. We're gonna access it with, sorry, not Linux server, our Linux desktop. We're gonna access it with a web browser. And the way that we do that is type in either the name or IP of our Synology NAS colon, and then either 2100 or 2101. Like with the bind mount up here, remember up here, we didn't change, it's basically, it's a folder path colon folder path. What's to the right is for the Docker container. And in this case, we don't have to worry about it. We don't want to change that. If you change that, it could mess things up. So we keep that the same. It's the same with the ports. We don't change what's to the right of the colon. We just need to change what's to the left. So that will dictate that. And the reason we have two ports, and you'll see this in a lot of Docker containers, is one is for accessing it via HTTP and the other is HTTPS. So typically the first one is HTTP and the second one is HTTPS. In the case of WebTop, that actually will make a slight difference, and I'll show you when we get into WebTop. Otherwise, we should be go. Oh, so then there's this SHM underscore size. This is short for shared memory. It does take, you're all running an operating system with a graphical desktop, so you might want to give it a little extra RAM. I'm actually going to give mine three gigs of RAM. No, I'm going to give it four. I'm going to go way high, but I've got 16 gigs of RAM available on my NAS. If you could, I would at least give it two. Two, I think, would be a decent sweet spot but you should be able to get by with just one. So let's scroll up here. And that's pretty much most of the changes that I wanna make. I am gonna make one other one. So if we go back to the linuxserver.io documentation, let's scroll way back up, way back up to a section that I don't remember the name, so I'm not saying it right now. Here we go, this section, version tags. So you can actually change what version of Linux you're running. So I, I don't know what the technical names of it are, but basically there's, I guess you would call it like, the Linux version, so we've got Alpine, Ubuntu, Fedora, Arch, Debian. You've probably heard of some of these. We're going to use Alpine. So by default, it uses XFCE. So this first word, XFCE, KDE, Mate, i3, there's one more. Openbox, now there's two more. Ice VM. Those are all, I guess you would call them different flavors. I think it just affects kind of how the desktop works a little bit and looks. So you can get a similar look using different back, I guess, different, different versions of Linux. Sorry. Not up to date on my Linux terminology, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use KDE Alpine. So in order to do that, I'm going to copy this tag. So you notice the default just says latest. And if we go back to our Docker Compose, that's what we get here for image is latest. So we just need to replace latest with whatever we want to use. So if you want to follow along KDE, the KDE version is kind of, it's a nice looking desktop, sort of like Windows. I don't know if I should compare it to Windows. It's just a nicer looking desktop. XFC is like using Windows 95. So it's probably more, it's probably meant for a lower resource system, but I didn't really get much of a difference when I tested the difference between XFC and KDE. So I'm gonna use KDE, feel free to use latest. We're gonna stick with Alpine just because it uses less resources than Ubuntu. You might wanna, if you really wanna get into this though, and you wanna install Ubuntu, I think that's a great way of learning Linux. So just a heads up. So I'm going to click next. And then I'm not gonna set up a web portal via web station and then start the project once it is created and I will click done. So it is going to install the full operating system. So it could take a little bit, especially if you're using Ubuntu. Is it Ubuntu or Ubuntu? I don't know. Alpine Linux should be a little bit quicker, but expect this to take a couple minutes. Project WebTop was successfully built and we got exit code zero. So that's exactly what we want. I'm gonna click close and now we just have to get to it. So the way to get to WebTop, let's, let's make sure that we're in project. Let's double click WebTop and then click on YAML configuration. So if you use the same first numbers as me, 2100 and 2101, that's a, that's a little nod to, to this channel name if you didn't catch that. So if you use the same ports as I did, 2100 and 2101, that is how we're gonna access it. Just make sure you're using this first one for HTTP and the second one for HTTPS. Let's access it using HTTPS. And the way that we're gonna do that is, I'm just gonna type in the IP address of my Synology NAS, which if you don't know your IP address, you can come up to where it says widgets, make sure system health is checked, and you should get your IP address here. If it's not, it should, it's probably 192.168.1. something. You can also click on these other lands and search for it if the one that's showing up isn't working for you. Another way you can do this though, and I've never done this in the past, you can actually use your server name. This should work for you most likely. So my server's name is Night Vision. So if I type in nightvision.local, it'll go to my NAS. How cool is that? So instead of that, I'm going to, and it actually gives me a port, um, 8661, that's what I set for my DSM. So let's go to 2101 and make sure that HTTPS is in the beginning. So 
going to go to nightvision.local2101, or instead of nightvision.local, you would just type in the name of your Synology NAS.local or the IP address of your Synology NAS. And check it out. We're all good. I mean, we're getting an error that everything is dangerous, but it's fun. Let's just continue. So we know that it's not dangerous because we made it. And check it out. We're in our Alpine Linux desktop. How cool is that? So the reason to use HTTPS, and it's not a huge deal, but if I click on this little tab to the left, I can see I've got Chasm VNC options. So this is the program that kind of lets us use this. I don't, I don't really know how to explain it. This is the program that lets us like interface with a desktop that doesn't really exist, that doesn't have a monitor connected to it or anything. So if I click on settings, I can click on streaming quality and I can actually make this lossless. And I believe in the documentation it says you can only do that with HTTPS. So that's the reason I like to do that. But you've got a lot of options here to fix up your screen settings. If you want to change the, re re not the revolution, the resolution. You can do that here. So let me exit out. I'm just going to click on settings here and that'll exit out of there. I'm going to hide you, but just know that you've got all these options here on the left that might help out. But here you go. You've got yourself an Alpine Linux desktop. So. I'm not going to do a full Linux tutorial, but if you have never used Linux before, you're kind of interested in doing some Linux command line, I'll walk you through a little bit. The first thing I'll say, though, is you should be aware that there are going to be some differences between this and a full-fledged operating system. It's still running off your Synology NAS. It's definitely going to be a little bit slower, I would think, than if you ran it natively off of like a mini PC or something. So don't get too crazy on it. I was never able to use Docker content, like to run Docker containers, I think that there are permission issues. So just know that if you're going to try some Linux stuff, this is probably going to be a little bit quirky. You're still running it in, an, in a container. So just, just know that. But enough about that. Let's, let's do what you should always do. The first thing you do when you've got a Linux system is you want to update it. So the command line for that in Alpine Linux, we'll just type in apk space update. And it's going to give me an error because I don't have permission. So I'm going to type in sudo apk update. And that will give me an update, but that doesn't upgrade everything. So we have to type in sudo apk upgrade. And if I would have typed space minus y on there, I wouldn't have to say yes to anything. Oh, that's very quick. This, if you're doing this on, if you installed Ubuntu, you would have typed in sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade, and then probably minus y. So you wouldn't have to say yes to everything. It'll do it automatically, so that's how that would work. But we are up to date. Let's download something. Let's download, let's do sudo apk add lazy docker. I'm gonna blow your mind with this one. So I'm gonna type in, got it installed. I'm gonna type in lazy docker. Look at this, I can see all of my docker containers that are up. So I think it will show your docker containers that are on your Synology NAS. But if you've ever heard of lazy docker, it's real easy to install on, very easy to install on if you've never heard of Lazy Docker, it's very easy to install on Alpine Linux, but here you go. You've got one working. I don't know if you can, can you execute commands? Well, I don't want to stop this because I'm using it, currently using it, so that'd be a bad idea. But I can check out stats and environmental variables and config and all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm going to hit the Q key. You can see down here it's got all the options, not options, your keyboard shortcuts on what to do. So I'm going to click Q and that will get me out of Lazy Docker. Let's install another program. There was one that Veronica was talking about on the Home Lab podcast. It's called Newsboat. So I'm going to type in apk add newsboat. Permission to die because I forgot sudo. sudo apk add newsboat. So now we've got newsboat. So if I type in newsboat, it won't do anything because it's not configured, but it gives us an error. It gives us a little hint here. So it's trying to load URLs from this file here, but no file exists. So we can make it. So we'll just type in nano config.newsboat slash urls. Nope, probably got to type in sudo at the beginning. It's making me type sudo for everything. Oh, nano's not found. So that means we don't have a text editor for command line. So I'm going to type in apk add nano. That is my favorite text editor. Sorry, sudo apk add nano. A lot of people use Vim. Vim is probably the most popular one, but I learned Nano and I'm too stubborn to learn anything new. I can, so here's a little Linux shortcut for you. You hit the up arrow and it'll show you all the commands that you had just typed. And there we go. So now I've got that, and all I have to do is I can add it an RSS URL. So look at this. I'm going to click my Firefox, my Fire, Firefox, Firefox browser within my Linux Docker container. So let's get an RSS feed. So I'm just going to the Home Lab Shows website. You can tell it's a little, it's a little bit slower than it probably would be on your desktop. But if I scroll around here, hopefully I can find an RSS feed. And here we go. Okay, so this is their RSS feed. I had to scroll down a little bit. It's a little bit slow, but let me copy this. Oh, I missed the T. All right, I'm going to remember that. Copy this, and then I'm going to paste it in here by 
clicking Control Shift V is in Victor. I'm going to make sure that that T is in the beginning. And then I'm going to click Control X. You can see the keyboard shortcuts down here. So you see it says like this up arrow X, not an arrow, I don't know what it's called, Chevron maybe? That's short for Control. So Control X will exit. And then I will just click Y because yes, I want to save it. And then I'll just hit Enter and it'll save that file for me. So now if I type in Newsboat, look at that, I got my first RSS feed. And I've got keyboard shortcuts on the bottom. I can just click R to reload. Oh, it didn't re didn't retrieve anything. Oh, that's so weird. Maybe it needs HTTPS or something. All right. All right, I figured out the problem. Just I just needed to come back in here, nano config newsboat URLs, and I needed to add HTTPS colon slash slash in the beginning. So that worked. I'm going to click Control X to exit out of here. And then I'll just type in newsboat again and check it out. Just type in, uh, I just need to click R and that'll reload. And now I'm in the, I've got the home lab show RSS feed all text. How cool is that? I think it works for YouTube feeds and news sites, all sorts of things. They, they got examples. They got examples if you look up the Newsboat website. What I should have done first, I don't know why I wasted my time doing that. Let me type in clear. That'll get rid of all this text. Let me put this to the right. That did not, that did not work at all. I want you to take a path to screen. You're taking up a very little bit. There you go. That's good. Then let me open up a, bra a file browser on the left. That worked a lot better. So check this out. If I type in ls, I've got all, I've got a desktop, downloads, pictures, or I'll type in ls space minus l, that'll list it out. All the folders that are here in command line are here in my file browser. And that's because I'm currently in command line, I'm in my home folder. So if I type this in, mkdir space, let's type in volume data 21. Check it out. I've got a folder called volume data 21 on my home, in my home folder on my desktop. And if I type in CD space volume data 21, I'm inside of that folder. So if I type in LS, there's nothing in there and there's nothing in here. But if I type in nano space linuxy linux.txt and I'll type in Alpine Linux is the best. And I will do control X, hit Y to save and then enter to save it out. And look at that. If I type in LS, I've got a text file here and a text file here that I can open up. But just as impressive, if I go back to my Synology NAS, let me close out of Container Manager. I'm back in my Docker Webtop folder, Webtop Home. Look who shows up. All of those folders that were on my Linux desktop that I made in Webtop. And I've got a Volume Data 21 folder, and I've got this useful text file that says Alpine Linux is the best. So there you go. That is a really quick walkthrough of how to use Webtop. So hopefully you get some... Uh, Hopefully you get some fun out of this. I think it's really cool. It's a great way to try Linux desktops, the couple that they've got on there. I think it's a great way to start to learn a little bit of Linux command line. And this doesn't really mess with your Synology system in any way. So it's kind of a safe way of doing it. Again, I wasn't able to do things like pop up and down Docker containers, although I can type in Docker PS and it will show me all the Docker containers running on my Synology NAS. So there's some interoperability there, but just don't expect to be able to do everything you could do as opposed to had you installed this, say, on a virtual machine, or if you just installed this like on a Raspberry Pi or something like that, you're gonna have a lot more power that way. But not, none of those are quite as easy to just set up and launch as Webtop for Docker. So hope that was useful and good luck to you.